may have seen these on eBay, the Malachite or Malahit as somebody, um, some of them pronounce it, SDR. It's supposed to go from 50 kilohertz to 200 megahertz. Or you can register for an upgrade to a gigahertz, I think it is. Um, but I thought this would be useful as a sort of self-contained thing to go around looking for sproggies. That's mainly why I bought it. Because um, if you're looking for sproggies, you want something handheld, not to, not lugging a computer around. So, anyway, what do you get in the box? It took quite a while to come from China. This is from China. And in the box, you just get this little thingy. You can see I've already broken it open. And, uh, well, there's the device. And what else do you get in the box? You get a USB C cable. I don't know what the heck this is. It doesn't seem to serve any function at all. But uh, let's chuck the box out of the way as usual and have a look at the thing. Um, basically, here's a touch screen. And it's got some knobs on the side. Uh, let's have a look. That's your charge socket. But apparently that does um, cat control and IQ output as well. Um, that is a little wheel that changes the megahertz. Well, the uh, tuning. And that's your volume control. It just goes round and round earphone socket and your on off switch focus will you um, on the other end all you've got is an aerial socket an SMA aerial socket it did come with a projector but I took it off oh let's turn it on long press on the button up it comes let's see if I can do something about that light. Screen auto dims after a while. Now this, some of them come with an aerial like this. This one didn't. I've nicked this off another device. does work. That's Radio 1. It will go very loud actually, which is quite, uh, quite surprising. really mess this up haven't I? Now, tuning is, that's the volume, the tuning is via this knob here, on the side, uh, see if I can find some other stations, but you can you can change the, the steps by tapping on the one end and it tunes in coarser steps but it takes a bit of getting used to I'll turn that down there's a band button there where you can select from various preset bands so 160 meter band which I've actually tuned in at the moment to uh, 12, 14. Now there's too much reflection in here, isn't there? Hang, let me hang on a minute. Let's 
very difficult to find anywhere that isn't affected by that pesky light. Um, it comes with a screen protector, which you can peel off. And you actually, um, the touchscreen works a little bit better without the screen protector. Um, there's two meter band. Uh, can't see without my glasses. The 160. You got 160, 80, 90 meters. All those sort of bands. What have you got on here? 52 meter band. Um, interference. No. Um, there was a signal on there a few minutes ago. That's gone. Um, no, nothing there. Uh, I have to say, the sensitivity on the low bands is pretty abysmal. Um, that's 12, 14, 12, 15 kilohertz. Now that is uh, quite a powerful BBC station. It would add a bit of wire. You can see it just coming up, but you can't hear much from it. On its own, it doesn't. It just doesn't work without an external aerial on the low, on the lower frequencies, which is probably a good thing if you're hunting QRM. Um, now, the big thing, the big problem with this thing, I'm going to turn that down, is that it's exceedingly difficult to select the frequency here. You'd think you just tap on. One of these. Half the time the touchscreen doesn't want to respond to you at all. Um, it just seems to step through. Each time you tap it, it just steps one more step. It's not That's not intuitive at all. So it just takes a while to, to learn how to, to drive it. But if you you can sort of quickly run through the frequencies and, and then you step it down to a much lower resolution and go in smaller steps. Audio output is stereo on the VHF FM band. It sounds plumbing good. I, I, it's really loud and it's stereo and it's good quality so I'll give them that. It's uh, that works really well. Um, it's got AGC. It's got noise reduction. That works. It's got noise blanker, and it's got squelch. So all those things work, and they come up on little things up here. The S meter sort of works. The band switch works, but selecting a frequency. You're supposed to be able to just touch touch a signal and make it appear well it does sort of but um, it's a bit hit and miss but the, re the thing that really bugs me on this you can't change the mode if you go on the two meter band it's fixed on narrow FM come on and this is the other thing the touch screen doesn't always work if you go on the FM band, it's wide FM. You can't change it. So if you want to search for interference on the FM band, it's usually best to search for it in the AM mode, because then you can you can see the signals and zoom in on them. You can't select AM mode on the on that band. And likewise, say on the uh, 
Oh, I don't know. Come here. The 80 metre band. It's lower side band. It's always lower side band. You can't change it. So that's a bit of a nuisance. But the thing that really, really, really bugs me about this thing is when you press menu, you can't get out of it. That's it. You're stuck. You can select uh, setting mode. Nothing works. These are all disabled. Uh, the menu button works, you see. You can step into that and out of that, but you can't get out of the menu. You've got a clock setting and step out of it. You've got LCD settings and you can step back out of those. You've got audio settings. You can step out of that, but you can't get out of the menu. Now, I, I found a little trick, which is to go into hard. Oh, it's flocked up now, isn't it? No. Nope. Come on, think about it. Go into hard, and then press the the um, frequency button on the side. Actually, clicks in. I think it's meant to be able to select things. We click it in. It will exit from that mode. That's the only way I've found of exiting from the uh, menu. Other than that, it does work. Um, it's got a lot of internal sprogs. I'm pretty sure that one there is an internal sprog. Uh, come back. See? Touch the screen, it comes back. Uh, let's have a listen, if we can. I think the volume's muted. Uh, let's, let's just move the frequency up. One final thing to mention, when you plug this into a Linux PC, it shows up as a USB device and you can, um, if you do an ls slash dev, it shows a new device, Serial 1, I think it's Serial 1, and TTY ACM 0 and TTY ACM 1. I haven't yet found out what those actually mean but I, but I presume that's got something to do with the cat interface so I shall be exploring that and uh, and report back perhaps there are several different versions of this thing some are called malachite some are called malahit some are big knobs on the side too close together for my liking some are very thick, some have two speakers on the back, some are plastic case, whereas this is a, a metal one. I would have thought a plastic case one would be pretty rubbish really because of the screening. Um, some have got the aerial socket on this side, some have got the aerial socket on the top, some are uncased, some have got great big jog, jog wheels on the side that stick right out. Some are in wooden cases. You know, there's just hundreds of different types of these things. And uh, it seems everybody's making their own version of them. And uh, the advert led you to believe that you've, you know, you just registered this thing to get it to open up to uh, extra frequencies. But I've heard horror stories where people have had to pay $50 to get the upgrade and there's no way of doing it without paying the $50. So that's a right royal ripoff. So that's why the radio is so cheap. So 
I don't know whether it's actually worth buying Chinese after all. Because, okay, the Russian one is three times the price. But it is a decent machine that uh, you don't have to register. It's all, it's all built in, it does it. It's just not a very nice... Uh, I don't think the form factor is as nice as this one. But there you go. You know, you live and learn. It works. I'm sure I can use it for the intended purpose. It's just not quite as usable as I thought it would be. It won't go up to 70 sems. Well, does that really matter? Because most of the interference I'm looking at is down at 2 metres and below. So, um, I think it will do what I wanted it to do. I'll report back on any future findings in a few in another video. Bye.